I thought we can start this reading vlog with a little unboxing. I ordered from Chamberlain Coffee because she bought out a new, I think I said before that I use her coffee almost exclusively because I really like it. Uh, and because I'm not a coffee, um, not a coffee person, but I don't know much about coffee. Now that I know that I like these, I just stick with them. So this is the one that I have at the moment. So I've got the Family Blend, which is the one that I, I'm not in shot, am I? And also, this sounds quite nice. Let's just appreciate this. Okay, so I, this is the one that I usually drink, the Family Blend. I like this hot. This is the espresso, the Fancy Mouse. This is what I usually have when I make iced coffee. So, yeah, I've tried all of them, I think. I've tried all of them, but the... The cat one? I don't think I've had that one yet. So she just brought out a new one, and also she brought out these really nice, like, glass um, mugs. And there was a bundle with a tote bag, and God knows I love a tote bag, so... Your girl had to get it. I just got in from work, and they delivered it to my so I was meant to come on Monday it's Saturday today so it came early which doesn't really happen a lot uh but I would have been off on Monday but they delivered it to my neighbor and the neighbors in my building are I very highly doubt that they're gonna watch this so I'm just gonna say they're fucking weird most of them not all of them but I've been having some problems so actually this is the one that I'm most excited about so I'm gonna leave that till last this this is the tote bag oh it's so cute look at the oh actually this is just a sticker let's get rid of that let's put this in the sun such a nice color we love to see it this is going to be me on to the actual coffee i think this is the breezy butterfly blend what does breezy butterfly blend taste like? Fun day at the beach or late night with friends. This bright rose will spark those summertime vibes. You'll taste delicious notes of berry, citrus, creamy chocolate and maple syrups. Good vibes only. That's what it says. I didn't just make that up. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably have that tomorrow. Mm, actually, yeah, I will. I'm going to make it tonight, then put it in the fridge and have it tomorrow morning. And then for... The piece de resistance, maybe, we'll see. Look how cute that packaging is already. I am whipped for packaging. Like, I am just, oh, it really is cute. Uh, I am a capitalist's dream, really. I love buying things. I love spending money so nice <laughs> look such a nice size as well we love it it's like double walled as well i don't know if you can see that that's the hall <laughs> um yeah so welcome to a new reading vlog i don't know why I started this with an unboxing, but I just love seeing what other people buy. So I thought I might as well. I'm reading Mona, which I've been looking forward to ever since I got it, or ever since I read the premise even. And yeah, it's not disappointing me at all. It's great. I love it. Um, I'm probably going to talk to you about it a little bit later. I am naked, so I'm going to go to, well, I'll not go to sleep, but I'm going to get into bed and probably watch Netflix 
if there's something that tickles my fancy. I've been feeling a bit anxious, so I'm just watching things that I already know I like. I've always been someone that rewatches things. I, I think I said this before as well. I've watched The Office a million times and I still watch it. Like when I finish it, I'll just put on this, the first season again. So <laughs> that's the level that I'm at. Other than that, I've not really got anything to say. So I think that just means that I should just finish this clip here. Right? Okay, bye. <laughs> wanted to give you yet another reading update you can see my uh, slippers i know that people hate them wait let me they're the furry ugg slippers i love them but people hate them um yeah i wanted to give you a reading update on mona everything's very pink i'm not even a pink person but i like these bed sheets it's like a dusky pink and obviously the uh, glossy jumper. Right, so I'm about 70-ish pages into this, I think. Yeah, 72, and it's only about 170 pages in total, I think. Yeah, 176. So, Mona. Mona is about a Peruvian writer who I believe at the beginning of the story lives in California and she gets invited to a kind of writers awards it's not a ceremony it's a handful of writers I can't remember if it's 12 or 20 for some reason both of those numbers seem familiar to me uh, get invited to a kind of cabin complex weekend away like write not writers retreat because they don't write i don't think but they've all been nominated for this literary prize in sweden and spent a weekend together and at the end of the weekend the winner gets announced get a, gets a two hundred thousand euro prize i believe so mona goes she is very well there's a lot of things going on with her it's very, very in a monologue -y. We get all of her interior thoughts. There's a lot of things going on that we have not so far kind of... Nothing's been explained yet. There's two men in her life uh, where something happened with them and she's avoiding them uh, on Skype, mostly. And But they kind of keep reoccurring in her thoughts. Her inner monologue is very saggy. The whole writing is very like social commentary, um, very, if you like kind of academia or campus novels, I think you'd like this because this is kind of taking a dig at that. It's mostly it's shining light on all the <laughs> pretentiousness of kind of writers and just literary personas in general and, um, I find it is really, really funny, but it's also, I think it's going to be quite dark as well. That's what I've heard other people say as well. And I think I'm already getting kind of the vibe of that, even though nothing's really happened. I don't think I'll get any plot twists or anything from this story, but that's not really what I'm reading it for. And I really like Mona herself, which is always a bonus, even though she's quite complex of a character. Um, I think she's likable. I've not really got much more to say about it at this point in time but I think I'll finish it either tonight or tomorrow and uh, now I'm going to get my eyebrows done very excited this is the before I've just got my glossier boy brow I'm really a glossier fan with the jumper on and the boy brow I'm also wearing the concealer and blush oh my god <laughs> I love that stuff yeah I'm just getting them threaded and tinted that's my form of self-care some people get the nails done, which is what I used to do, but I don't like the look of it anymore. But now my thing is eyebrows. <laughs> it's absolutely shit weather. Let me show you. It's horrible and rainy. You can't really see, but 
there's rain. <laughs> I know it's been like that recently in a lot of places in Europe especially where we've all had gorgeous weather like 20 degrees and then it started snowing but I'm not complaining I'm just gonna put on my raincoat and go to get my eyebrows done <laughs> I'll see you later goodbye <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> but I made cold brew coffee last night for the first time. I wanted to try it. And I wanted to make it with you. I'm very excited. I think it, I did it a bit wrong. So this is the thing. I think the coffee to water ratio is a bit off. Also, sorry, I'm very backlit, but it's too early. I'm not gonna change it. Um, yeah, I think I put in too much coffee, so it's probably going to be really strong. But it's the first time I tried it, so we'll just see how it goes. Let's see. Sunday. I am having a lazy Sunday as you can see. Uh, I'm just in my tracksuit bottoms and matching sweatshirt uh, and I'm making banana bread. I had, this is the banana bread in, uh, in the making. Um, I've had a lot of very ripe bananas, by a lot I mean three. Um, and I thought, I've not made a banana bread in a long time, but I love it. So that's what I'm making. Also, I finished Mona yesterday and I thought we could make a banana bread and talk about the book. I'm currently just mashing up the banana with a fork and uh, also sugar. Looks great. This is the most fun part, I think. Um, I'm using the Paul Hollywood um, recipe, which I've made this before. I think my friend Sophia actually sent this to me because she said it's a really good one. I made it before, it was really, really good. So I hope it turns out great this time around as well. I also recently got a, like, let me show you a loaf uh, tin. Is that what it's called? You know what I mean? I love the colour, so it's very really cute. Okay, so reading wise, I finished Mona yesterday, as I said, and when I finished it, I was not sure what to think about it. The ending was very, it caught me off guard. I didn't expect anything like that to happen. I don't want to spoil anything, but it felt very... Well, in a way, it felt very disjointed to me from the rest of the story. But when I sat with it for a while, I thought it actually made quite a lot of sense. As I said, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I read from a lot of reviews that they thought similarly. And um, I think a lot of people, their reading experience of the book was a bit ruined by the ending. That was not the case for me. I loved the book. I thought it was really, really good. Um, I think I said in the last reading update that it was going to get really dark, which it definitely did. I think I also said that there was a part of the story that included two men that kind of kept popping up throughout the story uh, that you didn't really know what the deal was with them. Um, when that gets revealed, that is very, very dark. So if you are thinking of reading this book, maybe read 
up on the trigger warnings beforehand because I do think it gets quite dark and also quite detailed. There's a lot of sexual abuse and kind of body harm in especially the end of the book. So just a heads up on that, but I think that added a bit more depth to the story. Otherwise, it was very funny, which I really appreciated. As I said, it's very satire, especially around the kind of writing community, uh, novelists and <laughs> poets in particular. She really takes advantage of a lot of stereotypes, but, oh, very backlit but it definitely works within the story. As I said, it was really funny, but I don't want to make it sound too light. There's definitely a very dark through line throughout the whole book. I'm just gonna mix with my hand to help mix it, and that's gonna be really loud, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. The batter looks <laughs> great. <laughs> I basically added almost everything. I didn't have any walnuts, uh, which is obviously what traditionally goes into a banana bread, if that's what you like. Uh, I only had hazelnuts, so I'm sure that will work as well. I also had some chocolate chips. Yeah, I'm just mixing it all now. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of give the closing Mona thoughts. <laughs> I've seen it compared to fake accounts, which in a way I agree with, but also, so I think why it's being compared to fake accounts is kind of the literary commentary and kind of the satire aspect which i do agree with that they um that there are some similarities but i do think that mona does it firstly a lot better and secondly a lot more subtly my problem with fake accounts was that it was just so on the nose and almost very like try hard in my opinion with mona even though they were straight up jokes it was just done so much better it was a lot more it was a lot funnier to me. Um, yeah, but I think if you did like fake accounts, which I know a lot of people did like it, I think maybe this could be even better for you. Another thing which I already briefly mentioned earlier is just the body, not body horror, but from the beginning, you know that something is wrong with her, something is wrong with her body. There are a lot of bruises on her body and she keeps asking herself how long bruises last on the body. Um, and she's trying to cover them up. That's obviously all connected to what you find out about her in the end, but there's strong themes of, she's basically just disregarding her body or not taking care of herself in any way, shape or form and distracting herself via drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, just kind of everything to numb her physical or mental pain. It does kind of play into this like unhinged women literary fiction thing that's very very popular at the moment but I do think it is more mature than a lot of those books that I've read recently and that doesn't that's not a dig at those books or that genre or that trend in general. I love those books but I think it's a bit more of a grown-up version of that almost. I've also seen it compared to a Tessa Moschweg a lot, especially my year of rest and relaxation, I would definitely agree with that. The weirdness and the kind of disgustingness of my year of rest and relaxation, I almost forgot the title there, uh, it's definitely also a thing in Mona. Just kind of more of a step up, not in not that it's more disgusting or more weird, but I think yeah, it's more of a grown up version. So I think maybe if you weren't the biggest fan of specifically My Year of Rest and Relaxation, but you would be open to give a book similar to that another shot, I think Mona would be a great choice because there's a lot of things similar, but I do think it is done in a more, for lack of a better word, matureness. And that really is lack of a better word. I just can't think of another way to describe it. Let me actually take you down here one second. The batter is in the loaf. It looks like baby vomit, I am aware, but I think that's normal for banana bread. So I'm going to put this in the oven, one sec. And I have to wait for an hour, so 
I might as well just end the vlog here. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. I'm not sure what book I pick up next, but I'm sure we'll find out together in the next vlog. Um, yeah, I hope you have a great day, evening, morning, whenever you're watching this. And yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next vlog. Goodbye. <laughs>